go. Readings and salutations, everyone. My name is Featherhoof. And this is Carnage Panda. And welcome to Finale Week. Proper Finale Week for Anime Talk of Summer 2024. Because there was something that ended last week, but we, you know what? Even the universe didn't want us talking about it. So... <laughs> That's very true. Uh, hopefully the universe does not get mad at us this week. So, yeah. Hopefully somebody hasn't been mistreating his computer so badly that it revolted against him. You know what? Last week I had not one but two accidents uh, involving the computer recording. And the, the anime talk just happened to be one of them. And, and it was very confusing. And I didn't like it. Did, did, did you give Audacity a spanking? Did you discipline it so that it will not happen again? Yeah, I turned it off and back on again. Ah, there we go. That that works. But we're back now. Final episode of the season. We're going to be finishing it up with uh, season two of 2.5D. And, well, I mean, we're doing like, what? One, two episodes of um We're just Oshinoko? doing two episodes of, of Oshinoko. Okay. So... Which is also season two, if I remember rightly. <laughs> yeah, but they've already announced season three because they, that's what they do at the end of the season, right? I mean, if it's getting one, yeah. <laughs> it is getting one. They they have announced it and because... it's definitely getting one. And I'm not going to show you the um, promotional art for it because it has spoilers like hell in it. But they, they have uh, announced uh, season three. Because if they announced season three and they were going to be releasing season four, that'd be a bit of misleading. There, there will probably be a season four based on the link, unless they're they're going to do like a, a twenty four episode uh, season three. So, yeah, we got this covered, don't we? I don't know. Do we? <laughs> we do. You heard it, folks. We've announced it. So therefore, it must happen. Okay, and since the universe uh, so rudely interrupted me last week and I was going over the manga, the Death Defying Princess came back. I, I'm guessing this is going to be a monthly manga, which is okay because, you know, they're giving us like 40 to 50 pages. Um, usually higher, Usually higher quality when they do uh, a monthly manga uh, as compared to weekly. But um, the, the consensus on this is that it's good. Uh, I'm really enjoying this, but now that I'm now that uh, ReZero has started airing this season, um, it, it, if you can now pinpoint the time that that we're actually recording this, it, it, it caused me to to think because I'm I'm also doing that uh, Xenosaga playthrough and going through all those games, and um, that game itself references a lot of anime, and then just by not sheer coincidence, I, I guess a lot of creators or whatever in, in the manga industry have either played or, or know somebody or, or watched it or whatever. It's become its own influence at this point, and you just see it cropping up um, like like references from it and, and themes and everything. So it got me thinking because um, ReZero really has that idea of, because Xenosaga uses a lot of Nietzschean concepts, and one of them is Eternal Recurrence. Um, it really got me thinking because that's that's what ReZero is really about. It's, it's about the eternal recurrence because what happens is that the, the main character, Subaru, he just keeps dying and getting put back at a, at like a reset point. He has to figure out how to get out of that, the, that entire loop. And that was basically the entirety of season two was just one scene just repeated over and over again. And it was like, 24 or 25 episodes of that and I didn't really like that season that much. Hopefully this one is better but I was looking through the cast list and almost assuredly at this point they have referenced Xenosaga because one of the characters in there has the name of uh, Bot and Kaidos in that and I've never seen another reference to this in, in anything other like like any mythology or anything. It just seems like it's, it's a for this video game that uh, Monolith Soft made, but the Death Defying Princess also uses the same theme because it's it's like uh, ReZero itself. It's just the eternal recurrence, living your life over and over again, and it, it's not the the same life as uh, Nietzsche Nietzsche um, 
purported, you know, you're just living the same life in the same sequence over and over again, and there's like no escape. These characters have influence on it and can change it. it so you, you get my drift, but um, she keeps getting decapitated at the end of the chapter for whatever reason. So we're just going to have to see if she gets a head in life. <laughs> was that what the universe was angry at me over? The dad joke? It could have been. It could okay. have been. Maybe. And then we also have Haku Taku, which I, I checked out. It's, it's the newest one in the Weekly Shonen Jump, but I just feel like this one's not long for this world because the, I don't know, the editor is not doing his job and telling, it's either the editor is not doing his job and telling this guy that this, this sort of storytelling is not going to work because the writer is doing a lot of off screening of things and also just telling us what happened instead of showing us. So it's either that or this guy is just uncoachable and can't and will not take this advice. So I don't think this is, is going to be long for this world. It's a story about game development, but I don't know what's going on because everything's off screen. But so I'll give this probably, I don't think I'm going to keep following it, but I think I, I'll just give it like 20 chapters and then it's going to get axed. I, I, <laughs> I'm putting this on axe alert immediately. You just some things you have a feel, a good feeling about, and I guess in this case it's a bad feeling. Uh, so yeah, that's that's all I have to cover this week, and it looks like we survived. The universe has not gotten angry at me, and we could continue on and uh, see some Oshinoko. So, well, before we head off there, I was curious, because you talked about, uh, Re you said ReZero was doing, like, the thing where, like, every episode was just repeating itself, just the same episode over and over? Yeah, well, it's not the same episode over and over. Um, they're not, like, storyboarding the same thing. It's just, oh, these 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 same sequence of, of events, maybe slightly different, are happening over and over again, and it's because Subaru dies for whatever reason, and he has a, a reset point. And he just keeps going from that reset point and he's trying to, to, to find a way out and, and fix it so that uh, I, I guess the story could get better. But it's just it's just like a, a trauma blender like Xenosaga is. OK, I was wondering if it was it was some some like uh, thing like uh, the melancholy of Haruhi uh, Suzumiya where they, it's they no have multiple episodes. which is like, hey, want to watch the same episode. See, I haven't watched times. that. I haven't watched that. I, Oh, okay. You have? No, 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 no. I, I, wait, have you? <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay. I, I, I don't, I have not watched it. Um, another buddy of mine who, uh, is really into anime was telling me about it and I was just like, oh God. Yeah. I've heard about that, but I just have never watched it myself. Um, I think I watched like one or two episodes back in like 2009 or something because I did go to the anime club in university a couple times, but that was at like one of the branches for my university and at the, the main campus, they didn't have that sort of thing for whatever reason, you know, you, you would think that the, the, the main campus has, has more stuff than the, the branches, but sometimes things uh, work out weird like that. <laughs> so ReZero wasn't that bad then, not, not to the point where like fans were, were revolting against it. I don't know if fans revolted against Haruhi. I don't know. I heard it made quite the stir, so I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I've never watched it, so well, I tend not I mean, to. I tend not so to comment on things that I, I don't watch. Well, that's why I'm asking about ReZero. Uh, it, did it cause a stir? Did it cause people to get all pissy? See, I like ReZero as long as uh, Subaru's not on screen because his entire characterization is just screaming at the top of his lungs. And ah. it, it's uh, that's that's the part that gets nauseating to me. Um, he, oh, okay. he has like a he has like a Ph.D. in screaming. Ew. OK, then that, that's just what I, I just that's all I really want to know. So <laughs> I was just curious if it was like met with the same kind of uh, fan fan response so anyway i guess uh we'll just head on off to uh some oshinoko as he said
This is not the smile and face of a guy who's playfully playing with his uh, terminally ill patient to make her happy. That's the face of, I'm going to throw this bitch off this roof. That's cruel. That's cruel. But tell me I ha- you haven't seen that smile on many a villain, anime villain face. I don't know what it is. There's something about it that doesn't look playful. That looks evil and sinister. You're, you're right. That That is a um, that that is the evil smile that they give to every... Um, edgy character that that's uh, like I am the darkness <laughs> blah 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 <laughs> I'm on my Sasuke <laughs> arc <laughs> damn it you beat me too I was, like, I was literally just about to say you fucker <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean that that's like the, the, the most um, well known I guess so I, I had to go for it yeah I guess but still <laughs> So it was like, it was like, oh, then, oh, I don't know. Like the scene was just like, oh, look at that. They, they forgot to turn their voices on, but oh, it's kind of cute. He's, he's being a, a nice guy, a nice doctor trying to make this uh, little girl who's terminally ill feels happy. And then, and then it just zoomed in on this. And I'm just like, I, I, um, mixed emotions. I also wanted to comment on this. This shot is like in every anime ever where they have a character like reaching up towards the sun or whatever. And I, I don't know. Or- I don't know if this is a reference to something or because I've never been able to dig it up and nobody has any idea when I've asked, but you'll see this in every anime ever. Somebody just reaches up towards the sun, I guess, to block it out because they're they're looking at the sun like some kind of moron. But yeah, this, this is just a, a shot. I don't know. Eternal recurrence or whatever. Eh, I mean, I, didn't, didn't Evangelion used to do this shot all the time? Only it was uh, with the main dude and, and ceiling fans. I don't know, you know, this, this <laughs> I love that, that, that you keep doing this. Evangelion is another show that I, I have physically been in the room and watched with Featherhoof, but I just don't remember that much about it. <laughs> I, like like a shot for shot analysis, you could not ask me. I'm like, Kakuro Rio no here, Mackie, what? <laughs> uh, speaking of that, uh, Kitchen is actually airing this season as well. Uh, they're doing the Kyoto arc, so they will get there. Um, but so wait, um, wait, they did. Is it a remake or are they just re released? Yeah, it's, it's it's a full remake. I don't know if they're going to get to the the arc after uh, the Kyoto arc, which is the Chenchu arc, which they didn't fully do in the original one. They only did a part of it, and they turned it into that four episode OVA that we watched, uh, Trust and Betrayal, which was one of the best looking, um, I guess, nineties anime because they they look completely different now. That they've gotten away from cell shading and everything, um, you know, they don't—they just don't use cells anymore. It's so depressing. My childhood is dead. Um, but <laughs> yeah, uh, that's totally irrelevant. Um, other than the the history of um, Japan being in the Meiji era and stuff. Well, they, they Went from I can't, I can't remember what the the preceding one was because it goes by the the name of the emperor and the Meiji era is named after Emperor Meiji. But um, wow, this is this much. <laughs> Damn. It's just named after the emperor, and the emperor actually didn't rule Japan. I, te- I technically was the ruler of Japan, but they they relegated all the uh, government business and stuff to the shogun. And that's the entire reason, because uh, when we showed up in, in our in our black ships made of uh, iron, uh, we told them to open up the trade or else. And then they, it sparked their own civil war, which was going on at roughly the same time as our civil war. Um, but that's just a, a brief uh, Japanese history lesson. Um, this this is also based off um, Oshido Ko itself has elements of Shinto mythology woven into it. Kind of like how in the West here, there's a lot of literature that has Christian mythology woven into it. I, I guess we could just uh, reference Xenosaga as well, because that has a lot of uh, Christian mythology in it. Yeah. But <laughs> when I was watch when, when I was reading this manga, because I, I, I read it after the first season came out and like the first episode I watched it, I was like, you know, what? I'm just going to pick up the manga. So I like read through it and then I was like, wait a second. I've read through this shit before because it it kept cropping up when I was reading it. And I was like, this is exactly what happens in there because 
to, to make a long story short, after I had um, watched Naruto and, and read it, you know, they, they keep coming up with these names of the attacks like, like Susano and Amaterasu and um, Tsukiyomi. So I was very interested uh, what's going on. Um, there's a lot of uh, retelling of Shinto mythology and Buddhism in Naruto as well. So uh, you could pick that up. Amaterasu, Susano, and uh, Sukuyomi are all from Shinto mythology. And um, bas basically what happens is, I, I did a whole video on, on this on my channel, but as soon as I, I started noticing this, and when they got to this part, I was like, oh, this is definitely, uh, th this is 100%. He's drawing from Shinto mythology. And, and it also does have Buddhism in it as well. Um, I, wasn't, I wasn't too sure about it, but they, they've kept hitting on that. And um, there's, a, there's a shrine that will come up later, and, and, and I'll talk about that as well. But uh, Aratate Shrine is um, the shrine to Ame no Uzume. And her husband Saratahiko, and they're they're like married, but I don't know. <laughs> it, it's weird <laughs> when you get to mythology because you know you have all these competing people who who told these different stories, and you don't know if it's really canon or not. But I guess it's all canon if, if you want to make it sense. Make it. I, I'm not making any sense there, but if you want to make sense out of it. <laughs> Theoretically, they're married and they met on a bridge, which is why I said that bridges are important because bridges come up in, in uh, Shinto mythology a lot. Like everybody meets on a fucking bridge for whatever reason. But um, now, now I know people are going to be like, no, -uh, you're wrong. The little girl is Tsukuyomi. But um, this is a retelling of Shinto mythology. They're not actually the the deified beings themselves but um ruby and aqua are supposed to be amaterasu and sukuyomi the legend goes that their dad after going down to um the underworld to rescue his wife izanami who had died in childbirth giving birth to kagasuchi that he went down there had this entire scooby-doo hanna-barbera adventure where he's like closing doors and shit to get out of the underworld because he was too repulsed by her decayed form, a uh, really nice guy, <laughs> he ran out of there. Was, it, it's just some, some real Scooby-Doo, Hanna-Barbera shit, if you, if you actually read it. Um, but when he gets out of there, he, he seals up the underworld with a rock, and then he goes and does this uh, thing called Misogi, which is ritual purification, because like he's like, man, it was just so gross looking at my dead wife. He goes <laughs> out there... <laughs> and, and uh, bays in the shrine and, and, and you know you see that in like every anime when they're like standing under the waterfall and uh, meditating to, to get cleansed that's a, that's a reference to uh, Izanagi doing his uh, ritual purification the misogi scene oh um, I never do that well well, now you know and knowing is half the battle but when he does that he gives birth to the, the, the three great children or whatever um, from his um from I believe it's his left eye sprouts um, Amaterasu. From his right eye sprouts Sukuyomi, and from his nose Susano. And you can see this right in here because the star in the eye is in Aqua's right eye, and the star in the eye is in Ruby's uh, left eye. And then they have the other kid. Um, what, what's his name? Taiki who is also related to them. So the three children you have there, the, the eyes match up and everything. So now I don't subscribe to the theory that they're, they're actually um, the, the real gods or whatever. It's just like, Oh, this mythology is underneath the hood. And that's really neat. Hmm. That's all I'm going to add there. <laughs> I had nothing else to add. <laughs> I'm... It's just interesting because, you, 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 like I said, I got that from Naruto. I watched the show. Wanted to know where the, the names of the attacks came from. In fact, when I looked that up, um, it was before um, the whole Itachi and Sasuke fight Kabuto thing. And because they had brought out a, an attack called Izanagi, I was like, they're going to bring out an attack called Izanami. I have no idea what this is going to do. But they're going to bring this in, and uh, <laughs> they they brought out an attack called Izanami. 
So <laughs> sometimes you have good predictors. Um, this is one of the things that I, I used to, to um, predict what was going to happen later on in this story. And pretty much everything came true. All right. This is another um, uh, Shinto mythology thing. Um, this is where Amaterasu hit herself into a, a, a cave after... I, I'm, I'm not even going to talk about it because the things Susano does in, in, in the... Um, I don't think it's the, the Nihon Shoki. Um, what's the other one called? Um, the Kojiki. Okay, that, it's the, the record of ancient things. Um, he just does some very bad things to his sister, which causes her to flee into a cave. And since she's the sun goddess, that takes the sun away from the world. And... This is kind of repeated in Final Fantasy XV after the sun is blotted out and all the monsters come out into the, in the world. And um, that, that's a cool reference as well. Uh, because in the, the Shinto mythology, since her, her radiance isn't there, all the demons are able to come out and, and terrorize the world. Oh. So, oh, wait, yeah. Wait, wait. So was this, what, what weapon was she using at the time? Was she using the reflector, the rosary, or the glaive? What? Amaterasu. You know, the the, the, the white wolf sun goddess you know, from Okami. I mean, which weapon was she, was she using? I don't know what you're talking about because I haven't played that game, so. <laughs> that's, that's one of those games that I, I have to get to eventually. No, um, since, since she's the sun goddess, she is the sun. Um, there's no sunlight if she hides her way, herself in a cave. Um, but you can't get to this cave because it's a protected, um, national, um, uh, what, what, what do I want to, uh, shrine or whatever. They, they won't let people down in there because, you know, people go down there, they'll do stupid stuff. What if I promise not to do stupid stuff? Bro, if I show you a picture of this cave, you're, you're going to be like, no, I'm not going in there. <laughs> That, that's like, if, if you go in there, that's where all the, the creepy horrors are going to hide. Um, no. <laughs> is that, you is that probably right? will get lost in there and never, uh, you, you will never come back out. And then Junji Ito will make a horrible uh, story about uh, what happened to me in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um... I know they do reference uh, Kana as the sun, but um, there are actually two sun gods in, in Japanese mythology. The the one I referenced back there, Saratahiko, who is uh, married to Ami no Uzume, is also a sun god. So there's no actual conflict here. Aww, they you can have two sun gods, so <laughs> they, <laughs> whatever. Well, hey, so long as the gods know how to share, there's no there's no problem. That's true. That's true. I mean, we've had other pantheons where clearly sharing's not on the menu, but you know, hey, if, if, if these two can share, then that's fine. Okay, so there is a story in there where they just don't like to share. Like, there, there's this one dude who, um, <laughs> oh my god, this this story is just crazy. But he goes down there and he was he's just doing stuff. I'm, I'm not going to get it too much into what he do, what he's doing, but. Basically, it involves a chick, and all the other brothers are jealous, so they, they devise this plan to kill him so that he can't have her, and they can, because, you know, it's going to work out between all 80 of them. But Of course, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the ways they start killing this dude are, are very inventive and creative, so they, like, lure him out to a mountain, and they're like, Yo, catch this boulder from the top of the mountain and everything will be great. So he's like, yo, okay, that's cool. What they do is they throw this flaming boar-shaped boulder at him, <laughs> which naturally crushes him to death. And since he's dead, he's not alive. But his mom or whatever comes along. He's like, oh, I'm so sad. Can he get a second chance? And then one of the three founding gods, um, what what do they call them? Like the the Koto Amasikami or whatever. Uh, I might be wrong on that. Those those might be the ones under them. But uh, uh, no way. It's, 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 it's the Zoku. It's the Zoku so, uh, Sanshin. So um, he's like one, one of those. Like yeah, that's cool. He could be he could be alive again. Um, then the next time they they kill him with a tree, and 
<laughs> <laughs> it's just so dumb. Like, why? But this guy eventually gets his revenge and enslaves all of Japan or whatever and becomes the emperor. And it, it's just uh, really dumb. But eventually he comes up to Susano and Susano is like, this is like one of the things that Susano does that is not absolutely crazy, batshit insane within the story because it's actually justified to, to do it to this guy. The, 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 the crazy batshit things. Uh, Susano doesn't like him and he's like, go fuck off. And you know, I'm not even going to get into that story because it's just like, what the fuck are they even talking about? Um, go read the Kojiki. It, it, it's a, it's a good comedy story. I'm probably going to get uh, cursed by everybody who loves Shintoism now, but whatever. You you heard him, folks. You have your mission down in the comments. Um, it's it's not very readable, to be honest. It, it's like reading the Bible. Like, almost exactly. It, it's just their version of it. But it's shorter. Definitely a plus. Wait, is that... Wait, that's how... You didn't go into that part. She, they were almost but he's like, he's like, hey, we're having a party out here. Come on, it's like, <laughs> it's like we're having such a fun party, man. It'd be great if Ami was out here. Woo! So I, I always predicted that this was never going to happen in the way that it happens in the Kojiki because if you slot them in as their as their god roles, Akane would be in the role of Ami no Uzume. But the way she she lures her out is using the Yada mirror, and she does this dance out in front of the cave topless. But I assumed that this would never happen because of today's broadcast standards and everything. There's not going to be a scene where Akane is dancing topless. Um, it's just not going to happen. But Akane, but Akane just said she just said that they, they they lured her out from being all cooped up in the cave by throwing a party. That's what she yeah, just said. All the gods threw a party and, and, and uh, Amaterasu <laughs> comes out of the cave because she got lured out, but that's how they <laughs> that's how they lured her out is that uh, Ami no Uzume uh, danced topless and hey, that was Ami, actually done there, what? There's no hey, Ami, there's food and booze and titties out here. What? <laughs> <laughs> what <the f> <laughs> this is this is just one of the things I was like, they're they're never gonna do this. Just like they're never gonna adapt any of the, the, the batshit insane stuff that Susano does in the, the uh Kojiki and uh, Niha Shoki because um if you if you read that you'll be like, Oh, I totally understand why Amaterasu was sad. This guy is a <laughs> dick. He is a capital he, he's a dick with a capital D. So yeah. Actually the entire word is capitalized. Oh, cap lock on, huh? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to talk about it, though, because it's it's just insane. Uh, go read about it. <laughs> Damn. You know, you you, you got you to gotta, uh, be, I, I think, you got to be at least a little little impressed by those people who, uh, when they go out to on vacation or trips or stuff like that, they're like, I'm prepared for anything. You sick? I got a medicine cabinet. Let's go. <laughs> well, no, I'm not going to say it. Oh, she's, she's a mo she has a mobile medicine cabinet. I love it. <laughs> it's like, you got allergies? You got a headache? You got uh, you got upset stomach? Diarrhea? What? I, I got it. I got you. <laughs> got you covered. It's like uh, the old, that old um, you know, in living color skit with uh, Luanda. It's like I got you, I got you. She always, so people try to get away from you know from her, and she's like, no, no, I, I got it, I got what you need. <laughs> the only in love, living color sketch that I could actually remember is the one where Jim Carrey is being the uh, karate instructor, and he, oh, he asked <laughs> he asked the woman to stab him, and because he's going to do some secret uh, technique or whatever. And, and she actually stabs him, and he's like, "You stabbed me wrong. <laughs> you gotta do it like this." <laughs> it's just so fucking hilarious. You don't remember uh, Fire Marshal Bill, though? I can't. I, I, I can't remember. I, I I don't know why, but there, there's just so much stuff that I can't remember anything. It's just a blur in my head. Or guys on film where they they, they the the two guys portray the very very over the top stereotype gays. Nope, can't remember it. Wow, really? Can't remember. 
You don't remember Luanda, the ugly woman, played by um, Jamie, Jamie Foxx? <laughs> nope. I, I, oh. The only thing I can remember like that is, is fucking cl- those Cleo commercials. Uh, call Miss Cleo. Uh, I'll tell you your, oh. your future. <laughs> <laughs> Always you coming on. The, skit that, the, one, the one true skit that they could never show again from In Living Color, Handyman. I, I, see, I don't know what you're talking about. He has all the powers of the handicap. Oh, I, I, I can I can see uh, why they would not show that now. Yeah, it, 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 that's something that would only be able to to live in the nineties. Yup. You don't even have to say anything more. It's, it's just like <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. Anyway, um, mobile medicine cabinet. Yay! Moving on. I, I okay. Um, I'm, I'm sort of reminded back to earlier in the season when we, when you brought up the the uh the topic of um oh, how to, how to put it where you know you know what what makes up a person even if they're reincarnated and stuff like that you know the memories yeah. and so on and so yeah. forth it's got to be fucked up to sit there and to be describing yourself talking about yourself and your 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 history of your story your life in the third person that's well, there, there are people up. that do that without the whole reincarnation thing anyway, so... Well, yeah, um, but those people are weird. I mean, <laughs> but oh, yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, Aqua's not exactly normal either. But I mean, I'm just saying, though, th- I mean, what you're describing, though, and what's, what I'm describing here, like, that's a totally different archetype of person, though. <laughs> the, the only um, one I can remember was a, was a comedy sketch uh, right, off, right off my head. And I want to get in this before you, you keep speaking. Is that a commercial from the Cartoon Network when they when they were doing um, Super Friends at the time, and they did one on oh. the, the League of Villains, and the, the the guy was like, "I all I want is a decent pair of pants," and, and the other guy was like, "Solomon, Solomon Grundy. Grundy want pants too." <laughs> <sighs> yeah, good times. Well, that's because, but that's also Solomon Grundy though. That he's he's um, uh, mentally subnormal, so. <laughs> Okay, that's that's a polite way of putting it. <laughs> but um, but yeah, it, it's just I'm just trying to think about it um, because yes, there are people who who talk about themselves in third person. I can't remember is that that's like a sign of some kind of narcissism or some shit. I don't know, but yeah, um, it, it's for him doing it here though. I mean, yeah, he can't say that I'm talking about me because I mean that. That'd be kind of a fucked up thing to be like, yeah, you know, those, you know how you, you have the hots for me and everything and how I'm 16 and all. Actually, I'm like in my 40s, technically speaking, mentally, because I, ha- I already lived 30 plus years before becoming the 16 year old. But, yeah, but if he said that, nobody would believe him. Exactly right. I mean, they're in Japan. They're in an anime. They should believe him, for God's sakes. I mean, Truck Coon's out there. But, um, you know, I, I don't think I've seen and, and his his evil cousin Train Coon. So. I don't think I've seen a single uh, instance of uh, uh, Truck Coon in this this uh, show or manga. So he hasn't got it. He's busy with other would be protags. <laughs> he's he's overworked. <laughs> exactly. You know the, the 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 manga and anime creators won't let him you know have vacation time. But um, I'm just thinking about mentally for him. I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously he's gone through a lot of horrible shit. But I mean, it's just just to sit there and. I don't know, it, it would almost be like an admission of saying, like, yeah, that's not me anymore. That's not me. You know, just to, to wipe away your own se- self-identity, you know, identity, at least part of it, to just be like, that person. Talk about third person, even though it, it was you. I just think it's, it's, it's such a... I mean, he is him, but at the same time, thing. he's not, also not him, because the, the person known as Goro Mamiya is dead. But he right. still has the memories, and to, to put it in, a, and all the emotional you know, attachments that go yeah. with those memories. It's not, it's not like a vision thing where it's like, oh, I have the memories back, but I don't have the emotional attachments to them. He has both. <laughs> so th- there's like little pieces of you that that you that you show the world, and you don't show the the same thing to to everybody. Like you, you have a different relationship with um like like your wife than you do with your mom or your dad or your brothers True. or your sisters. And uh, just randos on the street that you've never talked with before, you you act differently and show a different image. Um, he is Goro Amamiya, but he's also not him. 
He's um, Aqua Hoshino, but he's also not him. He's just in this weird space. He, he's, yeah, yeah, it, he's all of these things, but none of them. And I guess that further just goes down in that the idea I have is just it's just how strange. And I, I don't know if like some people really think about it when they when, you, when they watch these um, isekai animes or reincarnation animes or what, however you want to put it. This is this technically isekai because he didn't go to another world. He's well, no, it's, world. it's not isekai because isekai stands for another world. Right. So, so when when we talk about these, you know, these animes and stuff where they have the the, the reincarnation element with uh, all the previous memories intact, how how fucked up that would make a person just in general. See, th- this is an interesting uh, concept because in, in anime and manga and you know light novels and whatever they they do this thing where the the person gets to keep their memories, but. This is obviously a Buddhist construct where, where they got it from because, you know, as Buddhism spread east, it, it brought that whole, um, it, because Buddhism is an offshoot of Hinduism and Hinduism has a lot to do with the, the, the cycle of rebirth and, and reincarnation and everything. But both of those religions, when you're reincarnated, you're not reincarnated as that person. You're just like everything is tabula rasa, you're a blank slate. You're a new person, just a new potential. You don't have your memories. But in anime and manga, they do keep their memories. So I think this is an interesting, this could be an interesting look at like the psychology of that and and what goes on, if that was possible. Yeah. One eternity later. Memcho's laugh was so so bad and so fake that it's so Titus-like that... It crashed my computer. I, I can verify this. It crashed his computer so bad that he lost all of his settings, but recovered the audio. So if if everything before now seems a little different or a little weird, that was why. Uh, I think that's the first time in the history of ever that a Titus laugh crashed the computer. That reminds me... Um, I'm, I'm probably going to be doing a, a Final Fantasy Pixel remaster uh, modded run through at some point, but there's just some dude in there that keeps changing all the music to Titus laughs. So I don't know. Just pick a piece that, that that's like your favorite piece from uh, one through six. Like I don't know, Battle on the Big Bridge, all Titus laughs. Just just imagine oh. it that way. Ew! I don't even want to imagine that. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck his problem is, but he did that. <laughs> but but I got that reference. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of do. <laughs> I I don't get that out of this. <laughs> but I will comment in a second. I think I'll just decide not to comment. Bro, what the fuck? Look, I mean, it may not have hit you yet, but maybe one day it will. When the, the the crashing realization, wait a minute. Fuck. <laughs> she just looks so devastated. She said it out loud. That's the problem. She get she's finally said it out loud. It's 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 the point in which now it's true, even to you. But she hasn't made it to her thirtieth yet. Yeah, well, just remind her about just reminding her about it. Apparently, is a death blow, as the last as a previous episode has showed us. So that's true. Poor Mimcho. Poor, Poor Mimcho. nothing. Bitch is aging gracefully as fuck. <laughs> well, she, still she, looks, she is. She still she still looks like a you know a preteen idol at twenty five. Then yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's a, that's a curse because. You know, I, I kind of aged that way, and and I got carded and everything. Like like people thought I was like fifteen until I was like thirty nine, for whatever reason, and I would just get carded for like everything. Like you can't buy that pack of gum; you're too young. Like wait, what? what? <laughs> yeah. Uh, another thing I, I don't lost, actually do though. Until I lost all my hair, and that happened. You know, this one time I went in there to the to, to buy a pack of cigarettes for somebody else. Um, that that like like my older sister or my mom or something, and <laughs> the cashier just asked me, "Are you a cop?" 
I'll get in trouble if I sell it to you for as a cop. Like, what cop is just gonna be like, oh, you asked me if I'm a cop. I, I'm just gonna have to tell you that I'm a cop now. Like, what if, what if I really was a cop? Come on. I still love the people who believe that. You uh, gotta tell me. You gotta tell me. It's the law. You have to tell me. It's, it's, yeah, no, no, it's not the law. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't have my card on me at the time, and I, I was just like, oh, I, I forgot it. Um, but but they still sold it to me, but if I was a cop, they ah. would have been in trouble. Well, when I was, when I was you know, past my 18th birthday, I and actually even past my 21st birthday, I would notice a, a pattern. If I had shaved, people would card me. If I did not shave, people were like, nah, he's, yeah, he's, he's over 21, we're good. Which is funny because... <laughs> I al- I had already had most of a beard, if not all of it, by middle school. That's that's very true. Um, they they made us shave it off in high school, but I like kind of skirted the rules all the time because I, I was lazy and cheap, and I only shaved like once a week. But so I'd have like a almost full beard by the end of the week. Um, it doesn't grow out as fast anymore. I, it takes me like two weeks to to get it that that far. But yeah, my, yeah, I still I still have my weekly. I, I have to shave once a week, otherwise it becomes unmanageable. But then, like, I like other other dudes would like shave every day or whatever. I don't know what the fuck that would do to my skin if I did that. Yeah, fun times. Um, yeah, Mimcho, just grow a beard. I'm just gonna to stop it right here, just to point out something that uh, has been very controversial in the uh, Oshinoko community, but. Oh, okay. um, with the, with the Shinto mythology, um, first I'm going to point out that they, they came in reverse. So Amaterasu was born first, and then um, Su- Sukuyomi, and then Susano. But in this show, it's all reverse. Um, Taiki, who is Susano, came first. And then uh, Aqua came as the Sukuyomi, blah, blah, blah. And then Ruby came last, uh, our Amaterasu fill-in. Uh, huh. But what is very controversial is that... Amaterasu and Sukuyomi are brother and sister, but they're also married. Uh? So, do you, do you see where I'm going with this? I do. I don't. Uh, uh boy. Yeah, I can see. Okay, I can see why it's a uh, bit of a controversy. Um. This this is just a thing that that crops up in like pretty much every mythology though. So it it, it was just a, a sign of the times. Sure, we'll go with that. Well, also Izanami and Izanagi are the same way. You know, they're brother and sister, and they're also married, and they blah 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 blah. <laughs> Ah, uh, anyway, good times. I can foresee nothing bad ever coming of this. Yeah, me either. Um, I would like to point out, like, like it's not very clear here, but in the manga, this is a this is a Buddhist shrine. Uh, it's an abandoned shrine, and I tried to make it out, but I, I couldn't quite figure it out. What what the uh, hand signs with that that uh, the the figure and it is making um as we all know the the, the buddhist mudras are all ninja bullshit that uh that, that uh, came from naruto so <laughs> right that's how it that's, that's how it came yeah uh yeah mudras are just ninja shit uh if, <laughs> if you make the hand signs you could do magic or whatever sweet gotta say goro's looking good for a dead man he, he's lost a lot of weight you know kept his figure yeah it's, it's uh the the uh the, the whole uh, death and reincarnation diet's really doing him wonders. His glasses look pretty fine too, and you know his 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 white coat uh pretty pretty good. I, I he the rest of him decayed, but yeah, you know yeah, how yeah, much of a coat. mess that there's would make it all single, over that coat. There's not a single frayed thread on that dirty ass white coat. What the fuck? <laughs> but but yeah, um, do you think he still use glasses? I don't know about his dental plan, though. Um, his dental plan looks pretty fucked up right now. Well, he was a surgeon, right? Not a dentist. 
<laughs> there's one. That, there's one thing about uh, this show that I've noticed sometimes, where it's like we can go through a whole episode of just being like, okay, life in the day, you know, nothing, nothing really big is happening, you know. It's just sort of, it's just sort of here. There's some episodes that are just sort of here, you know. It's like, okay, and, and, and then suddenly there will be like a thing that happens in the last minute that suddenly pushes the story forward. It's like, uh, what the fuck. And with that, do you want to continue on? You mean towards the Funyawi? Could be. Of season two? Of season two. Okay, then. A few moments later. Damn, I look good. <laughs> it's like I lost a lot of weight, man. Um, if I would have known I could have gotten results like this, I would have done the die and reincarn get reincarnated diet a long time ago. Well, it took 15 years. <laughs> just to get my results in man hey 15 years he hasn't aged a day Woo. <laughs> that's true um <laughs> fountain of youth here man we need to find more of them abandoned buddha buddha temp, uh what, I didn't say, not temple what shrine <laughs> gotta find more of them Woo. ah uh. Leave yourself behind one for a few, you know, just a, a decade and a half and come back and woo, you got yourself a good physique. Very true. But uh, you also have to devastate the, the, the Brazilian barbecue. Uh, let's not forget that. That's very important. Hey, not, he's, he has, he, let's, let's say he has room to grow now. He can hit that Brazilian barbecue all day. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's exactly what I want to do. Got to put some meat on them bones now. <laughs> <laughs> You're terrible. Thank you. I mean, it kind of is when he subscribed to the, you know, die and get reincarnated diet system. So it is a little bit his fault. It could be. You know, what? It, it is definitely his fault. Um, If he would not have picked up the idiot ball, uh, none of that would have happened. So... Yeah, um, it's definitely his fault. Uh, you're wrong, Akane. Uh, you need to rethink your life choices and and stop this. <laughs> uh, nah, I'm not gonna. I was I was gonna ask something stupid. It's probably spoiler. I was like, didn't you say he fell off a cliff? How did his body get behind a damn uh, forgotten Buddha shrine? But it's probably gonna tell us if I, if, we, if I just shut up and keep watching, isn't it? I mean, it, they they do tell us, but it's the it's the most obvious thing in the world. Uh, the murderer dragged his body back there. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. So I'm assuming he's giving the plan one star. He didn't exactly uh, care for the results, huh? Only one star, though. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Man, what's what's with the subtitler? Why? What happened? What? 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 Who phrases it that way? It's painful, you four, isn't it? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> wow, my brain actually corrected it. And, and it swapped the four in you. Like, on its yeah, own. I, I, I just I, caught I that, that, and I was like, it. no, it should be the other way around. It's painful for you. <laughs> like, no, it's painful, you, it's, you four. <laughs> it's, it's, it's painful, you four. Uh, <laughs> dude, um, I, I guess this subtitler is overworked and, and on, the, on their cocaine binge or whatever, and they, they just couldn't, they couldn't handle it th this night. Even Yoda would be like, take a break, you must. <laughs> All praise the tactical fog. <laughs> oh, no, um, I don't know. I always want to, if I ever visit Japan, I just want to go to the hot springs. It seems like, like such a good thing to do. Uh, I don't know how you feel, but that's where I would go. I would like to do that, but the scene... I <laughs> I always sort of wonder in in anime Japan, not not real world Japan, anime Japan, is there like a hidden unspoken god? He has no name. He she it has no name, no form. You know, no one even worships it, but it's there to do its duty to make sure fog or objects gets in specific spots. Okay, technically there is. Um, <laughs> so I, I was talking about the the whole uh, Nihon Shoki and Kojiki. There's um, 8 million uh, kami, oh, but that's God. just that's just a placeholder. Um, th that's to mean that there's numerous and uncountable. 
uh, because they did not have the concept of infinity back then. But oh. um, yeah, there, there's numerous, and there's supposed to be a commie for everything, um, even the tactical fog. <laughs> Sweet. So, uh, why haven't all the people obsessed with uh, the titty anime has gone and tried to destroy it yet? It's, it's growing too powerful, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Every time they try, they, it, it tactically puts the fog in, in, in the way. Uh, you know, I, I, I have my, my thoughts on this is either, if you're going to do a scene like this, either commit to it or just cut it. Don't, don't put it in there. Um, they used to do it like that, but TV standards ha have tightened and everything, and you can only get them on the, the, the cable channels that don't have to adhere to, to broadcast standards. But you can go back and like, uh, a show that's airing this season, like Ronma One Half. It, it it aired that way back in I don't know, what was it nineteen eighty something I don't remember when it came out but it came out uh, forever ago and yeah. if you if you watched Ronma one half you know it doesn't really uh, cover that sort of thing up that and I have yes <laughs> um I probably won't watch the remake though because I've already watched uh, the original one and I kind of have this this thing where I just don't want to you know, retread old territory, even though I'm going to be watching the, the new real Roni Kenshin, but uh -huh. I didn't like the, the first season and it, it just doesn't stack up to the nineties one. I, I feel like the nineties on one, <laughs> I feel like the nineties one was better, even though it never adapted the, the, the final arc and just went into filler territory after they, they, uh, uh, finished off, uh, Shishio, or I guess he finished himself off. After he burst into flames? Yes. He burninated to death. I mean, are, 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 is it, in, I don't know if it's implying or outright saying that she's now, she at least thinks that she, you know, she knows that, that that's what Aqua's been doing this entire time. His whole, like, she's like now in on his revenge plot. She gets it. I think what they're trying to say is that when that, in that previous scene where Akane was trying to misdirect her, it just didn't work. And she was able to, to figure it out. Um, she, she was just okay. not fooled and she's like, yeah, that's what he's doing. He's, he, he's trying to, to, to get that guy. And I want him, to, I want to get him, I want him to find this person because I want to tear him to shreds. But clearly she's not aware that he's given up on the thing. Cause he thinks that he's dead. Yeah. Okay. All right. So well, I, I, my brain's a little slow. Sometimes I'm, I'm catching up. <laughs> Also, this this shrine is to, uh, like I, I said, was it the previous episode to uh, Ame no Uzume and Sara Uh This is also a shrine of marriage. And you can also tell if there's, if, if you're looking at the top of the, the Shinto shrines, um, you, you see the little X shape there. Yeah. Um, I the, can't the remember. Top I, I corners can't, there? Yeah, the, the top corners. I can't quite remember, but which way it is, but you can tell if it's to a, a male or female deity based on these, uh, the, the shapes of these things right here. I, oh. I would have to look it up, but it's, it's not fresh in my memory right now. Neat. Damn you for turning this into edutainment. I, I, I have to, I have to, uh, yeah. Um, this is, this is <laughs> like a nineties cartoon and, and we have to, to do it by the law. We have to do like the GI Joe, uh, Knowing it's half the battle thing. <laughs> Our cartoons have to be educational. Um, that's not exactly hard to do. Horses are, are incredibly flighty creatures. More education. Uh, you're, you're knowing half the battle and stuff right here. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't care what's coming out of that casket. Just you, know, you open it fast enough and boom, that, that horse is going to go running. It's like, oh, shit. <laughs> I'd like to see that. You ever see that video of the uh, the two horses who see a rabbit on the trail and they just refuse to get anywhere near it because they're terrified of it? I mean, wouldn't you be? No. Haven't you watched Monty Python? You don't know. You, that, that rabbit could be vicious. <laughs> sure. Okay, now that we have Raging Sith Lord Ruby, I, I just want to go into the eyes a little more. Uh, this is what I believe, because if you go into Shinto mythology 
And a lot of religions like to, to go into how numbers work. But in Shinto, the only number they really concern them with, themselves with is uh, the number eight. And that's just all over their things. Like, like I said, there's like eight million kami, which is blah, 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 infinity. But the, the number eight just um, pops up all over the place. Like um, you have uh, Yatagarasu, which is the, the crow that uh, does the guidance, is the eight-spanned crow. Uh, the Yata mirror is the uh, eight span mirror. Um, there were eight islands that that formed Japan, and then they 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 got Okinawa and Hokkaido later, and then just so on and so forth. It's just eight 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 all over the place. Um, so you really don't find the number six within within uh, Shinto. Um, so I was looking at the other places, and it, it's just served up on a silver platter with Buddhism because. They, they have the entire idea of the number six. Uh, it's Rikido, the, the way of the six pass. If you remember your Naruto again, they, they had the sage <laughs> of the six pass. Um, yeah. it's, it's totally about the, the, the number six for them. There, there's the six realms of samsara, um, which is reincarnation. Um, in Japanese, it's, it's Rene. So samsara becomes Rene for whatever reason. So I just call this the Rene gone. Um, it, it all goes back to Naruto, right? Apparently. Uh, but but there's also a Zeno Gears reference in there because they they miss uh, they misnamed um, Seton in the English when they bring his uh, real name to the the, for, the forefront. His name Hugo is Hugo, Hugo Ricto, and they mistranslated Ricto for whatever reason. Um, they spell it like R I C D E. AU, which makes it sound like it's French or something. Yeah. But it's it's Reek, though. The Way of the Six Pass, um, which oh. um, invokes reincarnation. And if you know the story of Xenogears, there's reincarnation in it. Lots of it. So, yeah. Um, to me, th- this is pretty clear, but I, I know people object to this. They, they're like, no, it can't possibly happen. Blah, blah, blah whatever reason um they they really were resistant to to the idea of what i talked about earlier about uh, amaterasu and sukuyomi being buried um so it will be interesting going forward that's all i'm gonna say but damn doesn't she look evil well i mean we had uh we had goro looking like you know with his demonic evil smile at the beginning of the last episode and now we, she's uh, she's sort of parodying it. Let's go. <laughs> you know, this is kind of how I felt about the the new Star Wars that they were going to have um, the the character of Ray go to the dark side and the other dude come to the light side, and it's the, the movie was going to end that way. But then it just was like a wet fart coming out in the entire third third movie and was really bad. But I, I wish I mean, they had gone. Da- I wish they had gone down that path. Well, it would have been better than, you know, she sat there and you know, the power of power of Christ compels you, uh, the bad guy to death with her lightsabers. That's very true. Um, I, I can't express how disappointing that is. We just need Kevin Sorbo to tell us, uh, tell us about that, right? <laughs> yeah, we don't need Kevin Sorbo telling us about anything, honestly. <laughs> when you find out what, you know, that guy is uh, all about, but... But he knows about disappointment. Well, Hercules does. <laughs> or this evil goateed Hercules. <laughs> That's very true. All right. Vampire Memcho. Mem- Memcho. <laughs> what is an idol? <laughs> A miserable pile of fanboys. <laughs> oh, wow. That was very bleak and you miss it. What did I bleak and miss? See what's happening in the background? They, they, they have the sun and the moon. Ah, I get Damn. it. Damn. Well, they moved that scene up uh, very far. Um, this this shouldn't have uh, actually happened till season three. So I don't know how I feel about this being put right here. Actually, <laughs> I do know how I feel about it because in one of the most recent chapters, they had this dude and Aqua finally caught up to him and they, they had a struggle and... In one of the panels, he looks like he's uh, Aqua from Konosuba. This dude right here. Um, uh-huh. He looks like he's Aqua from Konosuba just screaming your head off. 
<laughs> oh, it's God. just like <laughs> it's like, dude, I can't fucking take this seriously. Um, but yeah, uh, th- so this is their this- dad. Um, so, well, glad I gather because they showed him that at the end of a previous episode. Yeah. Um, but the the person on the ground is is that the little chick who's been talking to Ruby? Uh, no. Um, the uh, the the little chick that's been talking to the Ruby is an actual god. Um, oh. Okay. This is this is another actress, and and uh, people were like, "Oh, how's this uh, girl gonna uh, play out?" And then she gets instantly murdered in the same chapter. So there's not really much to to, to worry about. You never see her again after this scene. So. Uh, okay. You'll probably never, you'll never hear about her again. Okay, this is, this is just to show this that that uh, this douche nozzle is uh, quite quite the serial killer, then, huh? Yeah. The whole eye incident wasn't exactly a one-off thing of passion, whatever. This, this guy is just like hmm, killing famous people, gets me off. Yeah. Basically. Lovely. Well, I mean, that's a way to end season two. <laughs> I mean, this it's it's clearly got everything set up and ready to go for three. I mean, Ruby's uh, Ruby's down for the revenge plot. Aqua's trying to forget the revenge plot, and we got ourselves a continuation of a love triangle. So let's go. I guess I'll just talk about him because he's another one of those uh, who guys who are named. Darky McDarkerson. Um, oh, he is really. His name is uh, Hikaru Kamiki, and uh, Kamiki is um, a Shinto thing called the Sacred Trees, and these just house the bodies of the kami or gods, as they're they're normally translated. So that's that's another Shinto referen- uh, reference. Uh, Hikaru means light, but then they the the author kind of hid it by spelling his name in katakana. And then later, the, the kanji is a different spelling. Um, I guess I'll get to that when, when we talk about that uh, in maybe season three. Um, but I guess we might just not uh, be doing next season because that's just all sequels and um, nothing really interesting. So we'll probably be back when, when this uh, this airs again. And with the greatest anime that ever airs, Kagurabachi, which is going to change everybody's life, right? <laughs> that's that's what we've been told by people who hadn't seen it yet up to that point. Uh, yeah, so these are, these will go, uh, both of those will go great hand in hand because uh, we'll, we'll be uh, waking up uh, with fresh hatred in our in our minds with Kagurabachi and um, as, as will Ruby, so. <laughs> Hooray! So I guess uh, so we're at the end of the season. I mean, season two. What are your thoughts? How do you rate it? Was it better or worse than the first season? Because I I don't have the, actually this was better than the first season because the first season outside of episode one did not have the greatest animation, and there were quite a few episodes in this one that had just really mind blowing sequences. True. Um, for me, uh. It, I don't know how I feel. I, I sort of feel a little like um, a little bit of whiplash myself um, because it's. And I know they have to follow the stories of Ruby. They have to start follow the life of you know, Ruby and Aqua separately until they're you know we've, they're now on a revenge path together. I guess um, they had to get them there. But like going through the, like the first half of the season with the uh, a, you know live action adaptation of a manga on stage and play and you know you know getting insight on how acting works you know and how uh place you know how being in a play works and how adaptations work and it's like oh okay this is a very fascinating interesting with some really gorgeous animation and then that ends and it's like and now and now for something completely different (laughs) <laughs> yeah um while this like while this thread it's like thin thread is like woven interspe- you know, in- in- internally between each episode of the the revenge plot is like oh, it's, 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 it just to remind you every once in a while to go like it's still there it's still there did you did you catch that little glimpse that little glimpse right there that thing it's still there so you know and then and then you know the love plots and, and i'm like there's, there's a lot of there's a lot of different, it almost feels like a bunch of things are being sort of shoved together, but it doesn't, but not like, um, distractingly so, 
But it, it does give me a little bit of whiplash. Like, okay, we're over here. Now, but no, wait, wait, now it's this. But now it's this. It, 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 it's a little bit, it, it's, it's a little, little, little much, I think, for me at least. As bad again, especially for someone who went into this not watching first season and trying to play catch up. Have you caught up though? I mean, without watching season one, I can't say I have, but I mean, I, I think I get the gist enough to I, I not feel necessarily like this... have to. Yeah, I feel like this was a, was was better than season one because episode one is like movie quality, and then the rest of it's just like a normal TV anime, uh, and there's not much animation. It looks kind of stiff in places. Um, this 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 was a lot better. Now, I do think that the the whole murder subplot is um, probably the weakest part of the story, and most most disappointing part of the story, <laughs> but. Yeah, um, I want to watch season three for for two scenes, um, just just so I could be like Michael Jackson in the theater with the popcorn bucket, and it, it'll be amazing. <laughs> oh, the the thriller. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Took me a minute. Like, yeah, it, 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 I, I'm gonna love that. Um, it, it'll just be an amazing scene. Um, I totally predicted it and expected it, but it took the, the community by surprise. And they're like, what the fuck is even going on? What in tarnation? And I was like, uh, yeah, this was so obvious. But um, there's one other scene. I want to see that. I'm not even going to speak on what it, but it's going to be fucking hilarious. All right. So, yeah, the season two. Great to success. And with that, that brings us to the end of summer 2024 I, I i guess i got confused i thought there was another episode of uh 2.5d um so uh if if you heard me say that during our intro um oops i forgot <laughs> yeah we're, 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 we're in the, the next finale. we're in the next season of it and uh, i would uh, urge people to, to keep watching it because it's getting in the strongest narrative parts but um yeah we, we're just gonna wrap this up and since um next season is just a bunch of sequels and and other stuff, uh, super popular series. There's, there's no uh, reason for us to cover it. Uh, we will be back with the Kagura Bachis, and I don't know when we're going to be <laughs> back with this. <laughs> Maybe it will be when Kagura Bachi gets an anime adaptation. It's almost guaranteed at this point. Hey, if you guys, uh, hey, here's the thing: if you guys, if there's something you're particularly interested in us covering, you know, when we come back, you know, some season one, some new IPs out there, something you know that's coming up. Let us know what you might be interested in. Maybe we'll give it a look. Perhaps. Maybe. It'll at least give us a, a you know, a, a, a bit of a, what would you call it? Insight into what you guys are looking for. Yeah. Well, what are you guys looking at? It may not even be the same things that, that we're interested in. Um, I don't know, but, but this does seem like it's, it's been pretty popular, at least for our channels. I, I keep looking I don't typically bring it up, but I, I have been seeing the, the view counts on them. Um, so, looks like people do like this uh, stuff. It, it, weirdly enough, you're right. I mean, you're not wrong there. <laughs> and with that, folks, thank you all so much for hanging out with us. Thank you all so much for being here. If you enjoyed it, please let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, share it, or you can click on the annotations for the videos we've done. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you all on next time. Next time. Bye-bye.